Hello everyone, my name is Kim Christopher. I'm a reference librarian with the Haverford Township View Library and welcome to Reading with Reference where I'll be sharing with you some of the things I've read recently as reading recommendations. And to any new viewers, uh, if you like this video series, uh, please do check out the others that we have all posted on our Facebook and YouTube channels. So I have a few things here to talk about today. First off, the manga series Beastars by Paru Itagaki. And this story, um, it takes place on an alternate world uh, filled entirely with anthropomorphic animals. No humans in sight. And on this world, a very, and I emphasize, very tentative peace exists between the carnivores and herbivores. A peace that is put to the test, almost broken, when an herbivore is murdered and suspicion falls immediately upon the carnivores. and tent of peace, you know, it creates an even bigger divide between the two sides, and suspicion for the murder itself falls upon the main character of Lagoshi, a gray wolf, and, well, despite his very intimidating character and stature, Lagoshi is actually a very kind-hearted soul who would rather be left in peace, you know, just go on his way, live his life, but unfortunately, other than the murder itself and that sort of straining of the peace between the two sides, Lagoshi, he's put into a bit of a contundrum as he has a chance encounter with a white rabbit by the name of Haru, and immediately his primal instincts yell at him to, you know, chase down Haru, eat killer, eater, and everything, you know, as a predator, but at the same time, he begins to develop some sort of unexplained sort of sensations, feelings within himself romantic feelings even, and from there, Beastars begins to explore sort of this impossible sort of relationship that develops between predator and prey, carnivore and herbivore, and just how the two sides can coexist with each other. And yeah, so there's a lot more, there's there's so much to talk about Beastars that I can't go over in the time that I have here, but overall, if you loved the movie Zootopia, <laughs> You will love Beastars. This is practically a mirror of it. Uh, nothing saying she plagiarized uh, Zootopia, because this came a few months out after the fact. But um, yeah, if you love Zootopia, you'll love it, because this just goes more, much more in-depth into the idea of, you know, of war filled with anthropomorphic animals, and again, just how those two sides can coexist with each other under the circumstances, going into detail over everything about that kind of world. And... Also, if you watch any of my other videos, you know that I love a manga or graphic novel series that has excellent artwork. And Itagaki, she, she just does a wonderful job with the animals and the, the anthropomorphic animals in here. She she keeps all the things that make them animals, you know, how they look in real life, their characteristics and everything, but also just giving them sort of human expressions, I guess, you know, little ticks that make us human, that is, and giving, adding them to the animals, either, through, you know, shading or just the lines of their face and everything, but yeah, she just does an excellent, stellar job with the artwork here. So overall, again, if you love the movie Zootopia and you want a manga series or graphic novel manga series that has great story, excellent artwork, I highly recommend Beastars as a read. And then here I have, moving on, yet again, another manga series, Teromai Romaya by Mari Yamazaki. And this is a very unique, uh, odd in some ways, uh, sci-fi fantasy story idea where it follows the Roman architect Lucius in ancient Rome, who has been given, shall we say, an impossible task to build the absolute best bathhouse in all of Rome that everyone will flock to, and Lucius, and his personal problems aside that conflicted with his work, he's distressed. He doesn't know how he's going to build the best possible bathhouse in all of Rome, the entire world perhaps, when, well, because he's good, but not that good. And on the advice of a friend, he goes to a local bathhouse, you know, to unwind, relax, and maybe draw some inspiration for what he sees there. And in the midst of this, he is suddenly, without reason and warning, whipped away to modern-day Japan, where 
through his interactions with all the people there, all the things he sees, the technology, the innovations, he is inspired on how to solve his problem. And again, he is then whipped back to ancient Rome without warning. And so, yeah, Teramaya Romaya just goes along with that simple idea of Lucius getting into some sort of impossible engineering situation, being whipped off to modern day Japan, being inspired by what he sees there to solve his problem, and then being whipped back to ancient Rome and introducing all this modern stuff there. But, so, yeah, very simple idea, just keeps going on, long, on and on and on with those ideas, but what makes it great and why I recommend it as a manga read is it's one of those few unique time travel ideas, even though there's any humorous sort of fashion, it shows the reaction of the time traveler to their situation, to the things they see, the experiences they have, and then bringing those experiences back with them to their own time and exposing the other other people to those uh, experiences they had. And that's what makes Terra Mai Romai just a wonderful read. Just those sort of very humorous situations you can, any sort of situation you can imagine in your mind about someone from the past or someone in the future going to a different time and just those really bizarre situations they might get into. But yeah, I highly recommend this as a humor time uh, sci-fi fantasy read. It, it's... It's hard to put into words just how wonderful a read it is. And then last here I have, uh, finishing up, the original graphic novel Little Josephine, Memories and Pieces by Valerie Villeu and Raphael Sarfati. I hope I got their names there. <laughs> uh, nothing much to really explain about this one. Uh, it just is describing the experiences of the author of Valerie, who's actually a nurse in Paris, France, and the various interactions she had as a nurse with the elderly community as a caregiver or caretaker. And, well, it's a heartbreaking and yet touching story that she goes over because she shows, and why I would recommend it, just how flawed in many ways our healthcare system is, where all those systems we set up were set up with the best of intentions, you know, to help people. But over time, something like the healthcare system just got so distorted in terms of all the legalities, responsibilities, rules, regulations, and everything to the point that the people involved with this system just don't care about the people they're supposed to take care of anymore because they're just so drowning in all these legalities and issues that just prevent them from doing the job that they originally set out to do to help people and also the other reason I why I would recommend little Josephina's read as heartbreaking as it is to see Valerie in talking with uh, in interacting with Josephine who she was in charge with of taking care of Josephine she had Alzheimer's disease and this graphic novel it just shows how much of an effect Alzheimer's has on people, uh, the person who has it, as well as those involved with them, and just how it progresses, just how heartbreaking it is to see just how it chips away at someone's uh, life, the memories, their soul in a way, just destroying it piece by piece, bit by bit, to the point that nothing of the original person is left, it, and it is just heartbreaking to read. So. If you know nothing about Alzheimer's, you wanted to know just how it progresses, you don't have time, you know, sit down and read a long, detailed article or just that complex textbook about the subject of Alzheimer's, then I would highly recommend reading Little Josephine as a read. Again, it's heartbreaking to see, but just very enlightening to understand how Alzheimer's progresses, as well as just to see, again, how flawed the healthcare system is. It, even in Paris, France, she showed... Valerie and Raphael Sarfrathi, they just show how messed up the system is. And, well, that's everything I have to say about my uh, reading recommendations for today. And until we see each other again, uh, please know our library is open. The hours are Monday through Wednesday, 10 to 8, Thursday, 10 to 6, and Friday, Saturday, 10 to 5. You can come in, browse our collections, check items out, use our computers. Um, computer time is limited to 40 minutes, just so you know. 
And we are still doing our contactless curbside pickup. If that is an option you would like, just fill out a form online and call to pick up when you arrive in our parking lot. And until we see each other again, everyone, I hope you all have a wonderful day and take care.